If I were to describe the beauty of the older Call of Duty Zombies games in its simplest form, I would say that the beauty lies within its ability to seamlessly create an invigorating gameplay loop combined with story that is hidden, unique, and puzzling. The gameplay loop of Zombies as a whole, no matter the time period of its release, is some of the best work I have ever seen from developers. Ever. It is such an addicting mode with each game turning out so different but yet so similar. However, the game loop of this game could be studied elsewhere. Today, I am here to elaborate on the mystery of the older Call of Duty Zombies maps and how it got lost over time. Now I know, this is the most cliche thing ever. Oh look, it's another Zombies YouTuber talking about how older Call of Duty Zombies was so much better, oh my god. But I need you guys to hear me out on this one. The unknown is one of the scariest human concepts out there. I mean, as a real life example, the unknown of the depths of our oceans or the unknown of the depths of space is truly something terrifying to think about. There could be things out there and there also couldn't, and the idea of both is terrifying. That's why, although it isn't a horror game, Subnautica is considered to be one of the more scarier games in its genre because it shows off the possibility of the depths of what we simply cannot comprehend, the unknown. Just simply not knowing is truly by far more scary than actually knowing, and older Call of Duty Zombies absolutely nails that. I don't care what your first Zombies experience was, it could have been Black Ops 1, Black Ops 3, heck, even Cold War, but just for now we are going back to World at War. The Zombies mode, as most of you know, was a simple passion project started by a couple of developers working on the World at War team at the time. And back in the day, Call of Duty was focused extremely heavily on being realistic, as at their time their competitor was Medal of Honor and Zombies was just a little too childish for them. However, they still approved the project, but it was hidden behind the completion of the campaign. So you can imagine the horror on a child's face when he just got done completing the World at War campaign to be met with spine-chilling, terrifying laughter and the darkness of the bunker of Noct der Untoten. This was a new experience, and most who got to undergo this had no prior knowledge to the mode at all, most likely just expecting the main menu upon their return from the campaign. Before Call of Duty Zombies was even a mode, it was already providing mystery to the player by surprising them unexpectedly with a new experience. As maps were released and time went on, it was clear that the people loved the idea of a zombies mode in Call of Duty, but it was missing a key element. The story of this mode had not yet been established up to the point of Verruckt, and people began to theorize about the mysteries of some of these maps. Why was there a hand on the power switch in Verruckt? Why is there chalk on the wall on all of these maps? Who is that hanging man on Doris? Questions like this caused countless people to theorize about the story of this mode, since it was very clear that it was somewhat present in this mode somewhere and we just had to find it. I think this would be better explained if I were to give you guys a visual. Imagine spawning into Der Reese for the first time and immediately you are greeted with a mysterious machine that you have never seen before. You are confused, you don't know what this thing is, it's the first time you've ever seen it, of course it's the Pack-a-Punch. But upon further investigation, it seems that the machine is linked up to multiple different wires that all lead in three separate directions around the map. So obviously you conclude that the wires lead somewhere important to maybe open the blockade and access the machine. Now pause. You see what happened there? You were able to make inferences about maps and what to do simply from the first moment you even stepped into the map. But what it doesn't do is tell you explicitly. It is almost an insult to the intelligence of the player when games like Cold War just straight up gave you little symbols telling you where to go and what to do all the time like a director. And the simplicity of not being told and the simplicity of understanding Doris go hand in hand and it is a perfect seamless connection. This is where mysteries were developed and solved, right here on this map and the ones that came before it. We don't learn until much later that the hand on the power switch was Peter McCain's or the hanging man was actually H. Porter who made, you know, the whole ray gun thing. But what we did do was make theories about what happened to these people and why things like this occurred. Black Ops 1 does it even 
better in my opinion while also setting a horrifying atmosphere. For instance, most famously on Kino der Toten in the dressing room, you can hear knocking coming from these boxes inside of this barrier. Is this a person? Did somebody get trapped in there? Is it a zombie? We will never know, but the mystery of it can keep us guessing. Just by traveling around the map, you generate questions like, what are these weird looking things in these canisters? Are they zombies, nova crawlers, or people? W what is that? Just observing the map simply, we get unexplained mystery that has so much room for theories and speculation. Collecting the film reels on this map and going to Pack-a-Punch projects some of the most confusing and creepy imagery right on the big screen for you to see. The art of mystery in these games provides almost endless replayability as you are always looking for something new to find or theory to develop. It is truly something genuinely special. That feeling of discovering something and trying to solve it is such an enticing experience that is shared by some of the most successful games ever. Going to the other release map 5, it provides mystery as well, like what were they doing with the pigs in the basement? what horrors could possibly have been committed down here with all the blood on the floor and walls. Mystery provides replayability, yes, but the essence of horror located deep within its roots is something that makes zombies so unique. Black Ops 2's mystery does not back down at all either, like why can only Stuhlinger hear the voice of Richthof and why do we hear the transit bus on Nuketown? Simple small details like this really do go a long way in the story and gameplay of all these games and without it, Zombies just seem soulless, lifeless, almost like we already discovered everything there was to know about the subject. And where's the fun in that? Even Black Ops 3 uses mystery with its inexplicable lore and interesting map locations. Everything is just blended so seamlessly and to find and solve these mysteries, you had to play the game multiple times to get the scope of how great it was. However, the key idea of mystery is that it is hidden and puzzling, and thus the story of the mystery should be the background and not the main discussion. But what Black Ops 4 did is use the story and mystery as the foreground and everything that came behind it as the afterthought, which dragged gameplay and most importantly, mystery down with it. Do not get me wrong, I love the implications of story in this mode, but it leaves absolutely no room for discussion or theory on what is actually going on. Like great, we literally got everything we needed for the zombies timeline and whatnot, but now there is literally nothing to do than actually just play. Which of course isn't really a bad thing, but it removes countless hours of replayability from the maps and games. Black Ops 4 isn't the only killer of this, Cold War arguably destroyed mystery even more than Black Ops 4 did. Looking back to the Der Ries example, we concluded that we were able to solve that Pack-a-Punch was accessed by the wires without any pop-up boxes or directions, but this game decided that was too difficult. When you load up any Cold War map, you are constantly bombarded with boxes showing you where to go and what to do, even for the easter egg, which is just absurd. We do not need to be baby fed everything in the game, let our 5 brain cells do some work for once and solve some of it for ourselves. When you add things telling you what to look for and what to do, it just takes away all motivation to even discover anymore, as it is literally just laid out for you. And it really doesn't help that the Cold War zombie storyline isn't the most interesting thing in the world. I mean, unless you want to listen to all 572 pieces of intel found in every single mode and map. If you want to do that, be my guest. So for Cold War, although I still love it, it is a L in the mystery department. But the great thing about Call of Duty Zombies is that it doesn't go away. It's not like Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, these older games, they're never gonna go away. They're not just gonna disappear. And to be fair, there are still some ciphers in Black Ops 3 and the older games that haven't been solved yet. So if you're looking for some mystery and some transportation back to those old days, why don't you start getting cracking on those old ciphers, yeah? Mystery and Call of Duty Zombies is something that I see as a pinnacle invention for the mode, something that causes people to constantly turn. Without mystery with evidence in Cold War Zombies, we get a lifeless and soulless mode with no interest in solving the story or its roots. The unknown is the pinnacle of curiosity to the human mind and without it, 
there is no curiosity to be had. And with that, it's been a pleasure as always, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.